good thing about having a podcast which has a Patreon, patreon.com slash the downbeat, that makes money, is you can tax deduct a little hotel room with high speed internet in order to record and upload this episode of the Downbeat Podcast. If you're watching this, you can see that I'm in a hotel room. If you're listening to this, you can hear the quality is worse. It is not as good because I'm using a lovely Rode mic and it is very nice, but it's attached to a camera that's quite far away from me. Give me a fucking break. My guest this week is Matt Gasker. I caught up with Matt Gasker, one of the best drummers alive at his residence in Nashville. What a fucking welcoming guy. We had a little jam on his kits. That was wicked. I can confirm after seeing him up close, IRL, the man is a freak. Uh, He made me a lovely coffee. He poured me a gigantic whiskey, which I drank during the podcast. I get progressively drunk towards the end. That's now three episodes in a row that that's happened. Um, Enjoy. Buy a t-shirt. Patreon. Chuck as a quid so I can continue to do this. Uh, Matt Gasker on the Downbeat Podcast. <coughs> Take two. Let me check I'm in frame. You were in frame. Cheers. Thank you for the Cheers, coffee. Cheers, mate. What are we... Um, racist. What are we? <laughs> what are we drinking here? <laughs> We've got a lot. We got a yeah. fucking drink selection. Well, we got going San on. Pellegrino. You got to stay hydrated. Yeah. Up in this motherfucker. Um, we got uh, some oat milk um, with coffee extracted from my espresso machine. My beautiful espresso machine. Postmates the coffee. I I postmated the beans so that I could whip you up a little something. What about and then that? There's, then there's a uh, southern hospitality. <laughs> I guess so, yeah, yeah, that's true. And then, you know, some uh, Kentucky bourbon, straight bourbon, small batch for you. Elijah Craig! Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, we're going in, I love it. This is my kind of podcast. Bit of coffee, bit of whiskey. Is that good? Oh my <laughs> fucking good God. <laughs> Am I, is it just me drinking it? Come on. Yeah. You... I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna drink, I'm not gonna drink. No, I have to drink that much whiskey. You don't have to. It's a waste but of a great it's some whiskey. nice yeah, stuff yeah, that I just poured you. I mean, I'm fucking, so I'm fucking drinking. You kind of on the hook now, yeah. It's, I thought you were gonna say stop, you know. I didn't. I wasn't even looking. <laughs> I wasn't even looking. It's 47 percent as well. Okay. That's um, good shit. That's really good shit. I mean, bourbon is my absolute shit as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's the best for for colored my um, alcohol. God, yeah. it's beautiful. What a, but like, I'm going to ignore what we originally started the podcast on because okay. we're on topic, what I want to talk about just right now. All right, well, what's that? Number one, Matt Gasker, thank you for being on the podcast again. Thank you for having me, again. Second guest, you're the, the, only, the only guest that's been in person twice. Really? Everyone else is like a remote and an in-person, or yeah. they've just done one or the other. Do you find it's harder to do that? The remote? Yeah. I hate it. Yeah, I'd, I I stopped doing remote lessons because it's like, it's tough. There's it's, a disconnect. It's, yeah, it's it's tougher. It, it's not impossible, but it definitely like, it, it makes it it makes it harder. The 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 split second lag, on Zoom that or too. whatever yeah. is just in terms of like a conversational like I'm waiting for my turn to speak. You have to be thinking about what the next person says and then just trying to figure out are they about to speak or am i do i do i have a space to speak but the delay just ruins it i can't imagine what it's like for remote teaching for drums it's like tough because it you know yeah sometimes the the there's like a delay in the playing and what you're seeing but you just got to kind of put it together but then sometimes stuff skips but then also stuff is mic'd up right so you're not hearing somebody directly and that's the best advice that you can give is from a place of hearing them directly hearing and the raw dog seeing sound. them and yeah and seeing their set or like you know seeing how they play your set like you can help people adjust things immediately you know do you do in person lessons here or are you out, are you out on that you eat? I do but it, it's it's hard to get me to do it because I'm selfish with my time 
I like to develop myself. You know, I like to. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I like I to practice that. every day, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I like to go to the gym pretty much every day, five, six days a week. So that on top of like the, you know, the minutia of like emails and all the other stuff that I got to deal it with. It becomes what your time is worth to you is no one's going to pay that. Do you know what I mean? I, if, yeah. if you told me that I couldn't go to the gym or play the drums for a week, but. I could pay a thousand pounds to do it. I'm paying a thousand pounds. It's like it, yeah. would, it would. I get that. But you, surely you can you can charge elite prices for a lesson. What's an elite price? I've never I've never. What's what's your lesson? I charge 150 for an hour. That makes sense. Um, but like that's just I I upped it like over the years because I realized that I won't do any lessons if I don't charge that. Yeah, because your and time is worth. And like the the yeah, it's it's that it, it what it's worth to me, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's not it's not like uh, yeah, but I get the, it. the 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 struggle is like that aspect. But then the reason why I end up doing it is because I meet somebody and they're like, I really want a lesson with you, or like, you know, I know they're in town, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna give back. It's like you know, I I don't like the idea of being completely selfish asshole that like dominates the world of drumming and then doesn't give shit back like i i've I had so many dudes in my life that were incredibly giving to, of all their knowledge that like i i do owe i owe a debt basically so that's not i don't think anyone's putting you in the bracket of people who don't help you're uh i'm trying you are i can do more though for one of those you know? and i mean this in the nicest possible way freak players you're like you. <laughs> you're like one of the you're like humble about it. I don't think I've ever heard you. Uh, you know. No, I'm not. You're not. You're not self-deprecating, but you're not. I can be. I can be both. I can go through extremes where I'm like that fucking sucked. And that's what I mean. Like I mean, my bandmates and people recording me, they're like, "What are you talking? You need to chill, man." No, that sounds great. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, I'm literally the only person who hears it. And then there's times where I'm like, I fucking I murdered God. that shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm basically, I've, uh, I've touched God. God has, <laughs> he has flowed through me. I felt it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll take it back. Then. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, yeah, so like, I don't know. I'm very like, uh, I just like to recognize where I'm at. You know, so I'm not, I don't like to lie to myself about like, oh, well, I'm, I'm still the greatest or something. Like, even if I have a shit performance, it's like, no, I got to fix that. And if I have a really great performance, I've realized I'm like, I'm very hard on myself. You need to allow yourself to be like, that was fucking awesome. Because yeah. you're trying to do that again. That's and you want to just learning as well. Sorry, carry on. But yeah. I'm, I'm on the same, I'm on the same, like, I don't give myself a pat on, a, on the back for a good show but I will fucking berate myself for a bad show. Yeah. And at a certain point, like, you, you do it so often that, or do it so much that you realize this is unhealthy. And it's like, and it actually impacts your inspiration long term because, you know, you're not allowing yourself to be like, yes, I killed it. Like, ah. Oh relief yeah. you know because that's what you're working for but it is, is to achieve those moments of clarity you know? and you've just got to make a note to actually accept it instead of being like oh that was pretty good tomorrow's gonna suck though that's how i do <laughs> i bet you i blow it tomorrow uh, yeah <laughs> just. odds are i'm get. i've had it like where um you know there's like a big show on the tour where you're like oh my family's coming out or like uh, I'll never play good. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll kill it the day before, and I'm like, yes, yep. finally, I've hit the tour stride. I'm going to murder it. But, like, then the next day, it's like, of course, I didn't play good. Or nights when I'm like, you know, I, I haven't drank at all for weeks or something, and I'm sucking. And then I'd go out and drink one night, and the next day I'm like, man, this pro th there's no way this is going to be great, right? I, I drank last night, I don't feel great, and then I murder it just because of so my good, frame hungover. of mind. I play so good hungover, <laughs> I don't know what it is. You I mean, really? It's like, uh, the blood is so thin it gets to the muscle. <laughs> That's my science. I'm like, <laughs> maybe you're, you know, that part of your brain that like turns off like 
whenever you're drinking, it's the filter part where like, oh, I sh probably shouldn't say this, but you just say it anyways. I probably shouldn't play this, but you just play it anyways. So Think about it, it that it, way. It, oh, that's fucking where you just them. It's just like immediately from your consciousness to like, I'm just doing it. Would you ever have a drink before a show? I have. Oh, I have. Oh, I, I recently, I never did it. And then last tour we did, I was like, you know what? It was first tour back after COVID. And I was like, like we're saying, like I beat myself up for having bad shows and stuff. And I was like, I'm making this dream job feel too much like work. I know I take my work yeah. seriously, but it's just like I'm doing what people would love to be doing. And I'm like in a bad mood all the time. Because, and I was like, you know what? I'm having a couple of beers before I play. Then I fucking ripped. And then I was like, oh no. And that whole toy, like, it became just like- <laughs> Oh no, that. because you actually killed killed yeah. it. You did great. <laughs> You're and not it, supposed to do great. No, you it. no. It, it became like, I'll have a margarita before I play. That's it, <laughs> that's the level. And then it's yeah. like, it was really good, but it was dangerous because we were on early. And then I would, I'd be finished at like, 7.30. You're yeah, like, I burned off that of, drink, oh, man. I have another one. <laughs> I have another one. It's dangerous. I, mean, I probably burned off three or four, so, you know. Yeah, I can go for it. And then I play good hangovers. So it's a dangerous thing. Anyway, let me just... I'm, on the subject of um, this lovely bourbon and this lovely coffee, right, this is something that I've noticed. Musicians and food and drinks that have palate extremes what is the connection? Because we all, anyone that's like a musician, not just like, oh bro, I fucking play the bass, no offense. But yeah. come on, you're a bassist. Uh, everyone who is like, and what I want to say virtuoso, but I'm putting myself in there, so I'm not going to say virtuoso. But anyone who has like a dedication to music, also, coffee, whiskey, IPAs, like anything in that, Food, and incredible food. Incredible food. Yeah. I think I know. Ed, please. Okay, so please. every one of those musicians has some specific taste in music. Like, a lot of people are just even one-dimensional where they like one style. Like, but their taste within that style is like a specific palette, you know? Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Something like that. And like then there's that's like a good theory. for me, um I I like all different styles of music, but like it's gotta be the good top tier shit. You know, like I like all fucking I, I love all types of coffee. I like all types of fucking alcohol, but it's gotta be top tier shit. I don't drink fucking lower st stuff anymore. You know so, what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, but <laughs> see why that is is like my here's my theory on it. Okay. My theory on it is based on the skill required to prepare yes. the fruits of the labor. Yep. Yes. Correlates. Crafted. It's crafted. Cra crafted. Like music is like music. often crafted. And the, the reward you get out of the skills necessary is in line with the same as what happens in music. So you put the fucking work in and then you are at the top tier and the music you make is incredible. You put the work in, however the fuck they make that, I don't know, how they, you make whiskey or coffee. Yeah. Coffee's more of like, obviously a lot of it in the farmer and in the beans, but like the preparation is almost like, like you making that espresso earlier and being annoyed about your grind and stuff like that. It's the same as like, oh, my pedal settings were off. Like uh, yeah. you might as well have been in that kitchen going, ah, oh, my pedal settings were off. But when right. you get it, when those pedal settings are right and you're ripping yes, it. Yes, I fucking nailed it. You're getting it. And the reward not only is like nailing it, but it's actually like in the same in music, you nail it. The reward is the music sounds incredible and the, the food yes. and drink tastes incredible. I think yes. it's a really interesting correlation. Yeah. I, I don't know like a virtuoso musician who is just like, oh, just give me an instant coffee. I don't know what a single one. They either just don't like it and they have some other weird little thing. Yeah, it's usually road crew guys. They're like, I'll drink gas no, coffee. I'll drink I'm gas like, coffee. Okay. And, and no offense, I love you, but that's why you're cleaning the snare drum. <laughs> <laughs> you should, have a, nice, Taste. You should yeah. have a nicer coffee once in a while. You could be playing this motherfucker. I'm already in trouble for that. Um, <laughs> I think you're fine. Um, I've said fucking far worse. Yeah. Uh, 
I very much so appreciate like learning the process of how a bourbon is made or how like the coffee is farmed or the elevation or like the yeah the different processes they put it through like that that's all that always makes the experience more like oh okay what am i what am i sipping now what what flavor notes am i supposed to be tasting I okay like, i love it so much yeah it's, 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 and it's, it's intriguing if like, someone knows more than me about it yes. and like they're walking me through it it's exactly the same as i listen to a piece of music let's say you're yeah. walking me through saying someone doesn't know about I'm like yo check this out this is what they do the Mahavishnu Orchestra they got odd times they got like they play shit in like 19 but usually they're at, you know they play stuff in all times type of odd times but like they'll add 3 sixteenths for their 19 you know yeah and then like, like the listener understands that moment more yeah and enjoys it more the same with like same with coffee the same with the more you learn the process the more you get into it I love it yeah, I'm, I'm all fucking. You like about being it. turned on to things. Love it, and especially yeah. someone just explaining why something is. And the same, just like the same time, someone I think, I think the, I think it was Tool or something. The first time I was like, what the hell is going on here? And then someone went, oh, if you listen, he's playing a group of three, you know, he's just he's playing a fucking dotted eighth note. He's playing a group of three over the top, and I'm like, but it's in four. <laughs> and then my yeah. drum teacher was like, yeah, and I was like. Ethiopian Guji. <laughs> like the correlation of when I first learned why a good coffee is good and why good why things that I enjoy in music is good. Love it. I'm all about it. I'm already fucking drunk on this. Amazing. I'm not. I've, just had, I've had enough. Um, thank you for having me here in your lovely oh, Nashville, My pleasure. Nashville home. I've seen the drum shred room. The dungeon. I had a go on the drum kit. If anyone is like a... a fan they will know how many times i watched you rip that drum kit and just tried to be funny on the internet and now here we are i saw i saw some videos did you see them are we cool uh, I'm yes nice about very, you very I'm, nice very nice all nice things i was like wow i didn't you know you know why give that me too is? much shit that's you know why that is why because you're natty because <laughs> you're natty i appreciate that Subject the, number there, one. What? It's it's kind of funny, but like, there's always one that's like, no nah, man, this is obviously he, he's programming or like he's. I'm like, this guy, he must just be trolling me because he knows that I'm looking at comment. He sees I've replied to a few. He knows. <laughs> like, <laughs> those people. Our, our guitarist was tell, telling me about it the other day. Like, not to be ageist, but those people, they're always between 16 and 20 years old. You never get like a 30 year old going, well, this is obviously fake. Like it's, I don't know, it's a troll thing. It's a, I think it's people feeling, there's a double edged sword here with the, with the nattiness, but people leaving comments on stuff that they think is fake, that clearly isn't fake. Those people want to feel better about where they are at instead of putting the hard work in. But then you get the other side. So I did a video about our Infant Annihilator band. Do you know mm -hmm. that band with the, the video has no microphones? Yeah. And it's I still get 10 comments a day on that video of people going, well, actually, uh, he's playing it. You can clearly see. And it's like, you are fucking deluded. What? What are you like? There's, there's people going around saying you're fake. And then there's people going around saying that's real. Yeah. I need to stamp these people out. And people are like... I think we need to do it as a, as a, as a drum nation. How do yeah. we do it then? I love... Just what you're doing. The work that you're... You're doing God's work, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but so are you, because you put at the beginning of the video, this is what I like and this is what I see about your videos. You put it at the beginning. No edits, no samples. And then even then the comments are like, oh, why, did you need to, why did you need to say that? Surely. Because uh, everybody's, everybody's quantizing their shit these days, man. You and, need to say it. And everybody's editing together comps too. That's something that I don't do. Like having one part where you, you just go through and you're like, oh, well, I like this one part that I played this one time around, but I like this other part that I played this other time around. Well, oh, we'll just glue them together. And it's like, well, 
sure, you played it, but like what I'm trying to bring back is the art of live, basically. Mm. When you saw somebody live, you saw them play a, a tune from the head down and you saw it in real life. Are you, you, know? are you applying this to videos online or are you also not comping in the studio? Surely you're comping in the studio. I still comp in the studio yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But yeah. I, I agree, because we're on the same wavelength then. Did if it's you? just audio, if it's the record, yeah, I want every note to be perfect. The, the best. The, the perfect played part, you know, like as far as like placement too, so that it doesn't have to be quantized to the nth degree. Because yeah. the more perfect it is, the more it feels fucking amazing, the more it shouldn't be fucked with. Yeah. You know, and that's, the, that's why I like I take, it's usually like four to six weeks before a recording that I like hone that motherfucker in so that when i go to play it it's tight as an anus do you have you know? do you have a, a process there do you have this four to six weeks do you have is it hardcore just hammer the whole thing and then studio or is it hammer week off studio or is it because oh, right. if you're going to the gym... Very interesting. I'm, so Yeah, I, I want to... I don't care if these people know this. I want to know this. <laughs> so, yeah. So here's what I... As far as, like, gym relates to it, um, the gym stays normal up until, like, I don't know, two weeks or three weeks before. The, the week of, like, then I really start dropping off. It's pretty much just, like, cardio. Mm. Um because I, it's not that, oh, I'm going to be super stiff or but I could be. Sometimes it does like give me little, you know, I have a little thing in my wrist happening or elbow. It's more really about having that extra energy that I'm like my, my normal level of exercise is up here. And then I'm taking out all that workout that yeah. I've been doing. So now I have this abundance of energy to, de maxed out. to dedicate to the drums. Yeah. But like in terms of the the four to six weeks process before you play take the take the drums out of it is there like for uh, sorry take the gym out of it for yeah. drums is there like a split yes. are you There's doing a, here's what it is yes. up front you got to do like you know Give loading back. like like when you take creatine it's like you front load a bunch of creatine or something okay that's so basically what, what i do with material so i, I get material and and the farther ahead of time I can start putting it in my ear and like assimilating those those movements and everything, the better. And usually I'll go through like like six weeks out. For a couple weeks, I'll I'll hammer on it pretty hard. Full um, songs? Not the full parts. Yeah. So I take it in pieces. And then I have a little bit of a break to where I'm not really hammering it so much, but I'm doing things like what I'm going to record. So like basically supplementing, trying to not only play the one thing, because I've had this happen where, you know, you try to play the one thing, the one song or the, the three songs or whatever, and only do that. And all of a sudden, a week or two out, stuff starts falling apart. And I think it has to do with like novel stimulus. We need some sort of, are you aware of this like with working out? Like novel stimulus is like, okay, usually I do Stairmaster for 20 or 30 minutes. But instead, I'm, today I'm going to do battle ropes and I'm going to do reverse uh, sled pulls just to change shit up or go on the bicycle, you know. Um, it's different than what you're usually experiencing. So that differentiation causes your body to adapt more. So then when you come back to the other thing, there's... It's less. You gotta basically do stuff in waves. Like yeah. you do it in waves of lifting heavy weight, the, like the heaviest to get to your one rep max. But before that, you've gotta do all this volume. So like you're doing cycles basically of, you're cycling this stuff in and out. And it's kind of the same way um, with drums I've realized. And especially if you play like a bunch of different styles, like, you know, having certain materials cycle in and then cycle out like it actually helps gain forward momentum and not get stuck in that place where you're in a rut and you're like damn it i'm doing i've been doing what i'm supposed to be doing and you know it's just feeling like i'm 
you know, banging my head up against the wall. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I've hit a wall. That happens to me if I just, it's exactly the same. If I just go at it, here's the songs. I thought you might, here's, here's what I did before. I just want to do what you do because you're fucking great. So I, I'm going to tell you what I do. You can tell, tell me. No, yeah, I'm, I'm so, curious as well. So what I did on the last record was real new to me, which was, in fact, it was, it was post last record because I did it in the studio. There was a part I was having trouble with and I put flex time on in Logic and I took it down to 50% and I played the song at 50% and I was like, oh, and then I played it at 60%. And that, that was me applying like gym logic to it. And then I played it at 70% and 80% and by the time I got to 100, it was so much cleaner. Yeah. You ever do oh, that yeah. with like... It's, it's All the time. That A lot of times that's like my starting place. As like the, with animals, you know, a lot of it is speed and it's like, you know, playing... I can play something at speed, but is it going to be the thing that I want on the record? The thing that's going to be the most badass thing? Not necessarily. So like, you know, I'll go through basically a process where I'm trying to um, play, you know, whatever I can at first and, and come up, see what comes out naturally and try to document that and then go into the process where now I'm going to slow it down and start to just do a bunch of very like i do a stupid amount of variations to like each part and part partially it gets the the every little part and every little detail in my ear but it also like you know it gives you a crazy amount of options you know if you can come up with a bunch of like weird ways to come at it um what's the writing you know, process what's the writing process yeah like well for so like animals. a lot of times like you know this doesn't necessarily apply to animals because like we're writing it together um you know it's not like i'm just being handed something and then i'm like okay what can i do over this but sometimes it does whenever you're writing in the box which is what we do and you're you know typing in what you're gonna basically clicking on midi notes and going what would i play here okay yeah. i know what i would play and then so is that how you write? Now, right. you, all three of you in a room? Yep. Computer? Yep. Someone has an idea for a part? Well, it's usually Tosin. He usually starts the, the song off. He usually has like, you know, four or five parts. Um, sometimes it's only like two or three, and then the song goes in a completely different direction. Um, but so, yeah, like, Monomyth was basically, I, was I brought all this. open my fucking mouth to say... Okay, so monomyth. That there, was there that is, was my there, rhythms that I brought. I was like, "There's a motif. That yes. whole song is a motif. That's a right. motif, like yeah. The what, two, three, three. It's basically five, seven, seven, oh. five, five, seven. But the fives and sevens are made up of twos and threes. Yeah. So and two, then three, it go, two, two, three, two, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, two, three. Two, three, two, three. Two, three, two, three. And then, yeah, because that song, and then it comes in. So that, so when I hear that song, I'm hearing. Bum, bum, well, bum, 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 bum. it was originally in triplets. It was really dun 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 dun. dun, dun. But like then, you know, as we're writing the tune and like they're coming up with the guitar parts, because I didn't have like melody. I'm like, dude, please don't use like we we've done this before, where I come up with like some. Um, crazy rhythmic thing and I've got all these patterns and uh, a lot of times like I'll have like a demo that has like notes but I'm like D don't use my notes yeah. like there's coming from a drummer you guys can come up with way better harmony but yeah I was originally in triplets and as we're writing it out I'm like yo what if in the beginning I just fuck with them and play like straight I, like I, I love it. <laughs> like almost like some new metal shit or something you know? it's <laughs> fucking um and then when it switches it's fucking amazing yeah it was a little bit of a yeah uh, so, i don't know what it is uh, just fucking with people i guess so, I mean, there's Trolling. a lot of that brain dance has that as well like just the quintuplets no now it's in four no quintuplets you know what i mean the, well it's it's truly 16th note groups of five and 16th notes but the way we play that part in brain dance like i really am like hammering like 
as if it's quintuplets. But it's you know? not. The but illusion not. of quintuplets. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. That's the shit I love. Yeah. It's like that's, the, that's the fucking natural coffee bean. Like, the first time I had a lovely... Wait, there's blueberries in this coffee. Yeah. That's my fucking shit. So, Monomy, if you can't... You, you come to the table with that pattern. Yeah. A, a slew of patterns. I actually had a, a bunch of stuff that was, like, just MIDI. And a bunch of stuff didn't end up getting used because it's, like, you know... By the time we get through half of the riffs, like, most of the song is pretty much written. So then do we just force these other motifs in there? You know? It's like, no. We don't, we don't need them. It's um, funny because that, that song is almost completely made of that motif but because yeah. of how it changes so much it never feels like it in, until you like crack the code yeah it's fucking sick thank and you and there's a lot of me just saying this fucking thing it's fucking sick I rarely I mean I, everyone that's on the podcast I want them to be on the podcast but there's certain people we were talking before before we had to re-record this stuff all of this setup and stuff if I'm interviewing someone like you, sorry to fucking, uh, but like, I don't mind the setup. I don't care about the setup because I want the chat. If it's like a press, if it's like a press thing and it's like a, all the, oh, the, I'm run out of a cable. This is out of battery. Let me just charge this. Let me get the extension thing. And it's like, to talk to someone about a guitar and an album I don't like, I'm not gonna care. Fuck that, yeah. I don't give a goddamn shit, although. That's, that's actually, I think it's in your favor. Cause like, you don't do things authentically. It, or you don't do things inauthentically. So. It gives me a ceiling though, on what I can do, because I, I hate everyone and everything. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But maybe also everything that you do is, its own thing, but the, each one of those own things are a seed that, I mean, this podcast has table. blossomed into, you know, fucking pretty, pretty large podcast there. Here, let me get I don't want to, I don't want to mess your table up. I'm sorry. It's a nice table. This man respects wood. I appreciate I that. Respect, well, I respect the curb quote even more than respecting wood. Thank you. Actually. I'm not editing anything. Oh, right, there we go. For the sake of. Roller coaster. For the, for the sake of the podcast looking good. I had to get my, um. I had to get my notes out. I'm still not off the edits and the samples thing yet. So what is the answer, in your opinion, to the edit pandemic of YouTube videos? Because people truly, they can leave comments either way, but people truly don't know. We had a little conversation before this started about Chris Turner. I was convinced the first time I saw it, I was like, there's no way that's fucking real. And then the more I watched, I was like, kind of sounds real and then I was like I did a deep dive and I was like oh my fucking god it's real but the yeah. the the pool that we're all in is that normally that kind of playing because he's very it, uh, in the nicest possible sense robotic with his playing as in like he is a fucking machine he's highly precise whereas, yeah whereas you're like more jazzy so it's like you couldn't program what you do but you could pro, I mean, someone could, but it's not like a, a bedroom metalcore guitar couldn't program what you do, but they could program what Chris does, which is why, but not many people can play what Chris plays, almost no one. Yeah. So the assumption is just that this guy's not real and then you come down to it and you're like, oh my God, it is. I think he, he makes it clear, like he doesn't edit shit, you know. And that's how I first discovered that. It was some, I saw something online where it was like, he stuck, it, may, it might have been in the YouTube description or something, and I'm like, this shit's not edited? Yeah, like, but did you believe it straight away? At first I'm like, this is one of those sus guys that like is probably, oh, oh, you know. Oh, I'm <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Use that with mind. That's what, yeah. I, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like, where, how do we fix it? Everyone, I think it has to do with um, the drum community becoming better informed, and it's ideals too. Like, not everybody has that ideal. There's people that are like, whatever, man. It doesn't matter how the music's made, just as long as the fucking music's made. I don't give a shit. And um, I, I, I agree with that with music. 
physical listening of music, I kind of agree with that because synthesizers and shit like that, you know, this using technology to your advantage. When is a video? But, but, when is a but, video? Let me, let, me, let me say this though. There, there's something magical about humans. Humans. We have an ability beyond AI to assimilate things and to like play things in, in different ways. You know, like you can't teach an AI to do what a human does with music, to distill it. They will come up with nothing new. That's always what happens. Zero creativity. You can give them the formula, but they won't create anything new. And I think humans, over time, we are expressing human emotions and we're doing it through music and other people feel that quite literally sometimes. Like I'll get like goosebumps on my skin. It's called like um, auditory fission oh, or yeah. something like fission or something like that where it's like a passage moves you like the entrance of a solo or something you know like some that. People just like, you know some people don't get that? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was just a normal thing. Like, if, when you're deeply moved by a bit of music, that's just what happens. But apparently it's not normal. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah. I don't know. So, I think, like, people's eyes just need to be open to, like, you know, it's it's not all about precision, and I know I'm like one of the precise guys. You know, my stuff is pretty like I go hard on valuing that. But you know, through my journey, I'm like assessing what players do I love, and it's not just clean players because there's players that I hate who are absolutely 100% clean, played no wrong notes, but they do nothing for me. They have they have zero character. They have zero sustenance or soul or or grit or personality, whatever the fuck you want to call it. They ain't got it. And like music without that personality and human element just becomes like antiseptic. It becomes the formula, the formula rules, the formula becomes, you know, what people are fed to and are conscious and of. And if we can- they're that and we can't break it because they think, they hear, I, I tracked one album without editing anything, mm -hmm. just for the sake of it. And there was like, oh, yeah. there was like people saying like, oh, the drums sound, the drums don't sound right. And it was because it was like a metalcore album. And it's like, well, that's because in metalcore, everything is completely gridded. And I've not done that. And obviously it wasn't, it wasn't great. But like it wasn't a bad performance, but people yeah. are used to hearing it. The yes. same people are used to hearing that Paramore sample, that Paramore snare sound on everything. Yeah, and then it becomes homogenous. Exactly. That's the problem. But if you listen like the first metal records, they were a hundred percent like not on a any fucking click. Yeah, it was <laughs> like Dave Lombardo on on these records. Like, man, it's just raw. Like, I appreciate that stuff because it's like, it's got an attitude to it, yeah. you know? It's got like, it's like a middle finger, which is kind of what that fucking music, and that music is not about being like, oh, well, let's institutionalize what metal is and let's, yeah. let's teach it to our kids so they can pass it on from generation to generation to educate people and enlighten. No, it's, it's about feeling the emotion of fucking being repressed or being um, fighting against the system. And a lot of times like music can become a system like over time, like we create a genre and then it becomes a system that of rules and, and normalcies and vocabulary and all this stuff, which is good because it's a culture, but then it starts to become the box that people have to the fucking stag, live the in. The normalcy. That's, that's, that's what I'm afraid what is. is happening with this sample shit. It's a fucking box that people are being thrown into and not going to get ourselves out because too easy. 
It's See? too easy to just sample replace everything and not have to mix live drums. It's a pain in the dick you know what? to mix real drums uh, to deal with bleed I and think, mics. I think people just, uh, people also don't understand. People who like grew up like probably just a, just a bit younger than us who grew up in the the sample replace dramagog metalcore production yeah. time i don't think they know that it is capable to get those sounds from real microphones like i think yeah. they just assume well i'm just gonna slap a sample on it because this sound doesn't exist it's like the only reason that yeah. exists is because it actually was created at it some, was at yes. some time yeah like Nolly mixes my live stream and every time I sit and I play it, I'm like, this sounds sampled. It's crazy. Obviously, he's a fucking outlier, but if yeah. if you're into making music, then just fucking learn how to do it. These people like, like what you're saying, you want to give back more. Like, Nolly has never, when I've hit him up and just been like, hey man, how did you do this? He's never just gone, never not gone, oh, this is exactly what I did. Do you want me to send you a preset? I love that. Like, yeah. people just... Well... It's also easier to do that when you're a legitimate bad motherfucker. And he is. True. Like, he has worked on this craft so much, like, he doesn't really fear. Yeah. And I, and I, I feel kind of like that when I'm teaching shit. Like, it's like, I honestly, like, here it is. Like, I've given so many people my materials, you know, and I have my website, too. Like, that's fully available Check for people. Check it out. Because... Check it out. We talked about this the last time we had a podcast. Your single kick lessons. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw it, great sales from that, yeah. It it absolutely fucking changed my kick life. I still go through it. It's yeah. still part of my warm-up. I do too, actually. It's fucking <laughs> it's, awesome. I'm giving, like, my shit away. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, it's like, you know, I've had years with this stuff. And, you know, I don't know. I, it's like a... Yeah, it's... Uh, a There's level no of you, you have, you're not fearsome that you can't recreate or, you know, level up. And also a level of like, yeah, just being a chill dude and not being like a, there, there are some gatekeeper. Dude, yeah, there yeah. are dudes that are, you know, it's like, oh, what, how'd you play that insane lick? Oh man, this little, yeah, man, I don't know. It's just right. a, like, yeah, and they, no idea. they don't want to give it away. They, they don't want to give it away. What's the worst or they can't, they literally can't. What's the worst that could happen? It, like, in my, in like me giving any of my stuff away, I just think what's the worst that can happen? Oh, I'm going to help everyone else level up. And then like people don't forget who helped them and where they learn like you were saying yeah. earlier there was many people that helped you with licks so you try and also bestow some of your knowledge there's like yeah the worst that could possibly happen by people giving their secrets like nolly giving his secrets or everything the worst that could possibly happen is the quality of everything gets better yeah. and if you want That's to maintain <laughs> to be an outlier then you will have to level up so, and you're not, not going to because you've already displayed the discipline required to level up. So the only thing that can possibly happen is the musical society gets better. Yeah. So we should all just give everything out. Yeah. $150 an hour though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say there's uh, some price to it. Yeah, you know, no. it's, it's, but I think th this what we were talking before about my Patreon, patreon.com slash the downbeat. Give me one pound and only one pound. Um, we were talking about that before. I think your online lessons are priced perfectly. They are quote unquote cheap, but that yeah. reflects the society we live in. A lot of people don't have enough money for these things. Yeah. And yes, they may be intrinsically worth more if it was a one-on-one -on -one lesson. But when you add, the, the same with the Patreon, when you add the volume of people that require it or want it because of how good the product is, yeah. then that as a whole creates the amount of money it's worth. Yes. I tr I'm not going to ask you, but I truly yeah. hope it is doing well for you because the universal... Universe, what's it called? Universal function. Universal function yeah. and the single kick stuff. And is the... Linear, There's linear lesson. There's ghost note lesson. So I have the the single kick, okay. universal function, and the linear one. I should hit you with the ghost note too. 
That's a good I mean, I, 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 I will so have to, I'll pay for the others. I will happily pay for the others. Oh, I just, man, no, honestly, no. universal function just I'm still working through it. <laughs> like, it's a bitch. Dude, I am too. Like, uh, honestly, it's like, yeah, that, that stuff, there's so much material there that, like, you have to cycle through it, you know? But, like, the idea is, you know, ha have a pulse keeper and then play all this other shit between your left hand and your right kick and create freedom so that you can be a badass. Do that effortlessly, yeah. Yeah. Be a fucking absolute badass. Let me check my notes because I have this is I'll seamlessly edit this. Um okay, this is I got I've got so much to talk to you about. I love having someone I care about. Um <laughs> Okay, so another thing that I've heard you talk about, and you are the only fucking person, this is why we get on. Real, recognize, real. You are the only other person that I have heard talk. When asked about does lifting affect drumming, you've replied correctly. Everyone else has gone, oh yeah, it makes me fucking amazing, it makes me a fucking beast, it makes me this. And then I, I, I can't remember if it was on your, it was on a Twitch stream or it was on something, and you were like, you know, sometimes it stiffens me up. Sometimes it, you know, it's it's worse for me. Yeah. Um, but I love it so much. I'm not going to stop doing it. And that's yeah. exactly how I feel. I'm definitely if I lift and then play, I'm fucking. I'm so fluid. Everything's sick. Two days later, yeah. I'm a bit. I'm a bit yeah. stiff. Yeah, bro. It's like that lactic acid is is not going to just go away because you want it to. And apparently, that's part of the growth process. Like having that lactic acid in there does something to help it grow. So like if, you, oh. if you're count, trying to counter that constantly and avoid that pain like a little bitch, hmm. you're gonna not so, get as many gains. So, did, did, <laughs> so did, I'm like, oh great. Did you find the drop, so when you start, like, started lifting, did you find the, the drop off immediate or what? Was there a drop off? Was there like a, you know, as in like, playing wise is there certain things you cannot do same day or two days before or let's say you're on tour what's your are you lifting on tour um i do but it's very minimal it's basically like i'm taking the tour i'm taking off of lifting for the tour um i do enough stuff to like maybe give me a pump to like yeah. keep me active so I don't lose everything, but I'm like breaking down muscle too. And really it's like, I don't, I just really want to gear myself 100% towards the drums. Like, so that the only thing my body has to recover and focus on is getting sicker at drums. Um, Do you find in a tour, like you mentioned earlier about hitting, you know, the level in the tour where you're comfortable and like you're ripping. Do you find that comes in waves? Do you, first first couple of nights are a little bit shaky and then it gets better and better? Or like me it's personally, like, oh, okay. first couple of nights suck, it gets better, I hit my stride. Last week of tour, I play like absolute garbage. It can be like that, yeah. Basically, that's that, I kind of experienced a little bit of that this last tour. I think we just needed a little bit more rehearsal to start with to and there we haven't toured for like hadn't toured for like a year plus or something or maybe two years so like there's like some nervousness there and just for whatever reason I, I can never get rid of it the first couple days of tour um, so like I lower my caffeine intake so that I'm not fucking really? jittery yeah for for the first few days yeah but then, you know, you get more comfortable and it's like, okay, now I can have as yeah. much. By the end of the tour, I'm like, I can't get enough yeah. to like juice me up because I'm like, I'm just used to it. I'm just used to getting on stage. It's like, I can come from a nap and be like, oh, okay, let's go on stage and rip this show. Have, and you, have you got a pre-show ritual, pre-show pre -show, pre -show warm-up? Is it just whatever you're feeling on the day? Nothing? I, it, it, I guess it's a ritual when I'm first starting the tour, but like as the tour goes on, it's less of an important thing. Like I can literally, like I said, like wake up from a nap. Once you're in it on tour, once you've adjusted, um, but you have to do, like that's like ten years of touring yeah. with animals and doing this shit. Um, 
at that high level to where now I can just like wake up randomly and fucking do it. Any songs on the new record still kicking your ass or are they all? Monomyth, of course. That one is like the to get everything clean, 100% clean in that one. It's Is it it's hands tough. or feet? That's the, oh, the feet. tough part, yeah. Feet, that's, bro, because the like, fucking uh, there's nuts. periods I go through where I'm not using any double bass just because I'm like, uh, I play like a lot of like R&B, Neil Soul shit and like funk stuff and like rock, you know, and um, also just like jazz shit too. Like, you know, you heard downstairs, nice. like I have the little jazz kit. I fuck you know around what? on that every morning. I'm going to interject that into the podcast right now. <laughs> Sick. Now we're back from watching that. <laughs> fucking, I, it's like I know what I'm doing. I fucking don't. <laughs> but that's sick. Um, so what do you do? Like, Ooh, let's say you're like six week, six weeks out from a tour. Like, from a are tour you, or a record? Tour. Okay. So you're about to be on the road for, let's say it's a four week run. Okay. In your, so you don't have to fly over to Russia or something. It's going to be in your, you know, your stomping grounds, yeah. Europe or UK. Um, what does your regimen look like? What does your lifting routine look like? Are you still lifting heavy as fuck? So I fucking, I, tomorrow, one year ago to the day, I broke my back. So not not at the gym. I broke my back. I literally fell and fucking broke my back. And uh, was it during sex? No, no, that would have been extreme. No, I I broke my T8 vertebrae in my back like literally a year ago. Jesus. So since then, I can't go heavy on squats. That's the only mm -hmm. thing because it's exactly where my barbell goes. So I I've moved to hack squat for that. I still squat, yep. but I can't go heavy on that. But what I've noticed from that is, from not doing that, is heavy squats is the one that fucks me. I can go heavy on a hack, I can go heavy on a leg press, I can go heavy on whatever. Something about the lower back activity in the squat is what fries me for drumming. Mm. And since I've stopped that, my lifting does not change through mm. through like pre-tour tour what does change is my drumming so the area that i fucked in my back is like mid top it's now f it's fine but what I, where it happened and it's getting better where it happened the muscles are stiff around it and mm. it's a very specific problem is that you know, like to play two kicks in a row. Obviously, you've done it. I've seen you do it. You, you know. With one foot? T yeah, toe, toe hits the, the first one, full leg hits the second one. And wh whatever your technique, if, if that's your technique, your heel up technique. At a slow speed, if my back is locked up, there's a flexion that has to happen at that point where it just won't happen. It just Whoa. doesn't happen. So what I now have, I now have, and it's like, it's 170 to 190. It's not even fast shit. Mm. It's like a boom, ba, ba, boom, that. It will just not happen. Wow. So I've developed two ways to play the set. This is aside from the, from the gym, right? Because of this injury, I developed two ways to play the set. When my back is flaring up, I have... I, well, I have well my back is fine I have this is how I play the set which is how I normally play the set yeah one footing everything at that speed whatever then I have oh my back has fucked up my back's locked up or whatever it's not like the end of the world I have now a, a backup way to play the set which involves a lot more two footing of slower stuff which was actually really hard to do a lot more playing with my left foot instead of my right foot it doesn't happen with my left foot for some reason mm a lot more playing my left foot. So I have this backup section of my set, which I learned for f the back injury. But what I've also found is that 
I can flip flop between the two sets now. Even my back, my back's not now a problem. Right. But if I go too fucking hard in the gym, and I'm playing, and I'm like, oh, I feel pretty fucking, pretty burnt. I just swap to the other version of the set, and I mm. do like two days playing that version of the set, and then it's given whatever muscles were fatigued from the gym, nothing to do with my back, enough time to heal, and then in two days' time, I go back to the other version of the set. It's yeah. fucking crazy. That's great, though. <laughs> yeah, for your, for your left foot development. Um, my left foot is strong, probably stronger than my out. right foot. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's weird. But it, it, a lot of it is, the, the parts I'm talking about, a lot of it is, um, if it's a fast bit, I will have to go right foot, uh, left foot, right hand. Like if there's a fast like double kick thing. It's a weird like second backup version of the set, which I developed for the back. But now it means that I can go ham on tour like gym. Yeah. Which is fucking awesome. Damn. Yeah, I can't do that, man. It like you have too much going on. My, my shit, my shit's fucking simple. Like comparatively yeah. to your shit. Yeah, it, it is different playing like rock, more rock shit. Yeah, I have no out of out of my own personal imposter syndrome. I have no hard double kick because if I can't nail it, I. I'm in the worst fucking mood. So I just don't yeah. put those parts in. I put like reasonably difficult, I put more difficult hand shit than foot shit. My feet have always been better. My feet have got better since your two things your um, single, pedal, single lesson. pedal lessons. And then I sent Stan Bicknell a video of me playing the drums, and he was like, You play the bass drum insanely. Because uh, I was just playing it all from the fucking hip. I wasn't doing any kind of fucking toe. Dropping, yeah, any no, of that shit. Dropping. I wasn't doing any of that shit. And then once he told me that, I went back to your lessons actually, and I realised you've put accents over. So like, if there's so there's, there's yeah, the uh, ostinato, the kick drum ostinato, which is in your in your pack, which yeah. displaces. You've already put it in the the uh, like the accent on the second beat. So once Stan had told me about that shit. I went back to your book recently, honestly, mm. really recently, like six weeks ago. Went back yeah. to your thing and went through it with like, like doing yeah. that. Yeah. And my feet have never been better. That's sick. Never been better. Yeah. So I'm gonna crush the gym on this tour. <laughs> <laughs> do gonna, it. And we'll see, we'll see what happens. Now, I, because I have the backup, the backup of the set. But when I play, if I play, the day of a lift, I play so well. But the day after a lift, yeah, I, I for not. arms, I fucking crush the day of whatever it is. Even though I'm I'm working my arms and then I'm going to play, I think it's all the blood that rushes to that area. Maybe like it sends a bunch of nutrients there. It starts sending all the nutrients there, and then I'm just loaded up or something. But or like muscle mem like muscle mind muscle connection or something. Yeah. But like that's why I keep it limited on the on the road because like the two days later thing, mm -hmm. I'll 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 do it where, um, if I know I have a day off in two days, that's gonna be a gym day or that's gonna be a day where I lift, and the day before two days before the day off because I know yeah. I'm gonna be sore in two days, but it's fine. It's the day off. Got it. How many days off does animals have roughly? On Roughly you once a, a week. Singer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, singer bands. A lot of times it ends up being less. Mm. You you know, but, to... but we've said like, yo, like this 13 days in a row shit, at a certain point, like the crew gets worn out and like, so do we. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's not good. It's, you need that super compensation as well. Like you've been hammering for so many days. You know what it's like. You've been hammering for so many yeah. days. Performance gets really, really good. It maybe tails off. Then you have that day off. That one show after the yeah. day off is then you're fucking strong. butter, baby. Strong again. It's fucking going for it. What's it like not having a singer? Have you been in like bands with the singer, with the singer before? Like, hmm, it's been so long. Yeah, now. I was gonna say it's been a fucking minute. But like today, well, I'll give you my example very quickly. We had band practice booked for yesterday. One band practice yesterday. 
We had that's it before the tour. Yeah, we had to have another. One. We're not playing animals as leaders. So. <laughs> I mean, we have like two days, maybe three. Yeah, that's for your shit, that's crazy. We are yeah. a fast rage against the machine. It's fine, but we had one practice yesterday. Was supposed to be the practice. Oh no, we needed to book another one today. I don't think it was any of the musicians' fault that we needed to book another one today. But, like, you don't have to. see. That. What's, like, you've got crew now, but, like, have you got a drum tech? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, he's been with me since, like, 2014. Does he do everything? Mm hmm. Minus sound check and chug. Yep. Isn't it just the fucking best? It's amazing. It makes and you enjoy your instrument <laughs> so yeah. much more. Yeah. It's pretty fucking incredible, but he also, he's like a Leatherman tool. He, d he does like everything. He's like kind of wired, just he, as a person. He likes to smoke weed a lot, but it doesn't impact his wiringness like wish. at all. Yeah, I, I don't get I it. Wish. I'm like, you actually need this medication. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and otherwise you were like too like, oh, and it's like, it's too much. But like he, he like, he handles laptop. He... You know, he does a lot. He's pretty much like the stage manager. Is like he, you know, is in charge of a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, he's like, like I said, like the Leatherman tool. He's like our, he's our guy that we can't go on the road without, basically. Have you got is the guitar tech as well? Surely. Yes, one a, guitar tech. One guitar for tech for both really. Javier and Tosin. And then drum tech. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. such a small touring party. Yeah, I that's think wonderful. eight or nine people total. I mean, that's actually bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, because, you know, you got, okay, so drum tech, guitar tech, tour manager, um, merch, uh, lighting person, because now we've got this light show where, you know, it's like we really need the same person doing it every night. Um, what else? Lights must then be the three of us. more important with no singer, like... The, the lighting show. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's like an extra instrument. It's when like you get a, a good LD, more it's an like, abstraction sort of thing, you know. Having no singer, but still people sing. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. That must feel fucking good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's fucking sick. Yeah. I haven't seen you guys since. Since we were in Man. What mm. was it? Car bomb. Manchester? Car bomb. Yep. Animals Car We're, we're doing. We're doing a tour with them in the fall. Is it announced? Is that allowed to be I talked think so. about? Yeah, we'll, we'll just talk about it anyways. UK, UK, Euro? No. America? It's going to be US. Yeah. America. America? <laughs> no good for me. Band's fucking crazy. Elliot? Yeah. Crazy. I love him. I, love him. I got to get him on the podcast. You do. You definitely should. He's a huge Vinny head. Vinny Caliuta, he's like... You can tell. Yeah, yeah. He's like, him and you, it's like, you're, you're more obviously influenced by, like, the great. Like, fusion guys. Yeah, but, sort. like, when you listen to Car Bomb, as, a, like, a listener, you just think, oh, it's a fucking crazy metal band, I don't understand what's going on. But then when you talk to Elliot and you see his playing, you're like, oh, okay. What metal it. drummer knows quintuplets and septuplets and all this other shit? He used to have... You know what I'm saying? A, what, it's, what, and, like, plays them. Fuck, man. <laughs> the fact they have no click. That is... Yeah, that's a... Man, sometimes they, they feel shit differently. Like, like, literally, they're thinking different things time signature wise it's an alien but, and and like some of the transitions it's like it kind of feels like that sometimes but like because there's these little like the hangs yeah just yeah. a little bit where it's but it's like felt so th i think they're on the precipice uh they they are like actually probably more forward we're animals is more like in the pocket in terms of like uh everything is pretty much gridded you know we're on a grid yeah um the only times we're not is like in something like monomyth where it's like okay now we're replacing twos and threes with threes and fives but like they're fucking they've assimilated all that grid shit but now they're like going far beyond that where 
but they they're playing wouldn't... quintuplets and they'll, they'll go to quintuplet speed they'll go to like triplet speed and then they'll do all sorts of fucking but nutty shit they've been going for so long and i don't think they would have had their little resurgence if animals hadn't have like brought in the nicest the masses, possible way nerdy fucking shit to the masses yeah because then car bomb came back car bomb like yeah I had a car bomb split in like fucking, I guess 2003 or something. I played with car bomb in 2012, like, but they were just, they were the same size. The world hadn't evolved enough for people to, to go. To understand To them. understand it. It was just like, that oh, that, not that bullshitting. band's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That band's crazy. They're not, it's like, they're no, not bullshitting. They're really crazy. You don't, you don't understand. They yeah. are insane. They play people. shit that I haven't figured out and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to not because... <laughs> I kind of like listening to it and, and not knowing. You know, they're one of the very few bands that I do that with. It's, I love it. It's really rare that I take that approach. Usually, I'm like, no, nah, I want to. I want to know what the fuck they do. We're gonna get to some bands that you like in a minute because I didn't even warn you for this. There's a bit at the end of the podcast now. We're gonna talk about that. But there's okay. two other things I want to talk about before then. Um, on the last podcast that we did. We talked very briefly about Blast Beats, and in the podcast, pre, pre, how do I say, par, parathesia? How do, par, parasia. Parasia, that's how I pronounce it. Okay, parasia. so it's pre, it pre, pre that, we were talking about Blast Beats very, very briefly, and you announced on the podcast, you were like, yeah, I want to bring some blasts into animals, but I want to do it crazy like I haven't heard people do. I want to do like putting groups of you know threes or fives into the blast beat. Red Mizo, boom! It fucking happened. <laughs> it happened. You said it. Yeah. We talked about it, and then that's crazy. And yeah. the the pattern, whatever it is, I don't know. Like off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. But the left hand is accenting it. Yeah. What is it? It's um, in the fucking crazy. Bit. Oh, it's no. It's in it's in microaggressions. What? Yeah. Let me fucking pull this up. No. Yeah, where my left hand is no, going, all one. the downbeats. And the kicks are on the upbeats. No, there's another one. You're talking about the breakdown of Red Miso? Yes. I don't, I don't come, think before that, before that, there's a blast. Oh, there's a blast. Yes, you accent it's the left, triplets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you accent the left hand in it. I don't know if it's on the record, yeah, but yeah. it's in Get, the minor playthrough. It's in triplets. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly I'm, it. I'm doing like fours with the left hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's in triplets. I fucking yeah, know yeah. this guy's parts more than him. <laughs> but like you talked about it. I on just the didn't think of it as a blast because it's it's a uh, it's a blast. triplets. It's a but yeah, yeah, classic blast. Yeah, yeah. It is. But like. You talked about it on the podcast. You were like, I want to do it, but I want to do it where there's accents in the left hand. That's weird, yeah. But yeah. not the Chris Penny, like, thing. And then you did it. I, when I watched, I think it's on my watch, watch through of the Red Miso play. I was like, he fucking did it. Because yeah, you were yeah. talking about it. I remember it was like, yeah. it was yesterday. We need more of that. Push. I, I can't, yeah, I didn't remember that I had said that in, on the last one. Damn. You had said it. I remember yeah. everything about Blast Beats. <laughs> <laughs> I remember absolutely everything about Blast Beats. Yeah, we need to do more. We need to do more. I mean, it definitely sure. fucking worked. It was sick as fuck. Um, we're uh, the last thing on their record, because I do actually fucking love the record. Um, other than Monomyth, any other songs on there just kicking your ass? Um, Is it ironic the one that you wrote the most of kicks your ass the most? <laughs> Yeah, it's because we put it in a grid, and it was like, we put it in the system, you know, and it was like, I just sent the MIDI, you know, the airdropped MIDI. And Where did like, you write the MIDI? What's your, what's your... Back at home or something. Yeah, but what's your, uh, sorry, not literally. <laughs> what's logic. It, what, is it logic? Logic, yeah. I use logic. Um, for, like, comping drums and all that shit, uh, I use Pro Tools. We are the same, but yeah. writing logic. Pro Tools MIDI absolutely fucking stinks. But you cannot beat it for tracking fucking live shit. Yeah. It's just yeah. the fucking best. It's true. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's another part uh, in Thoughts and Prayers um, where it's like, you know, this crazy breakdown part 
like there's this slow intro that's in five and then it kind of starts going nuts um there's a particular part there um some triplets that i like some combos that i put together is that the nuts like, fill yeah i think so it's like yeah maybe i should that one's a bitch just because like to get it super consistent and like on the grid perfectly is it like singles combo hand and feet it's three hands three feet so like you know but then i'm mixing in like one hand and yeah two feet, i know exactly i know exactly you know so like go, going back and forth between those like immediately and that's kind of like where and uh, sometimes you do not warm up before a show yeah but it's got to be like you know after a week in tour week and a half then it's like um i'm good uh yeah let's see what it is yeah it's that one thoughts and prayers all right it's my, it's my album of the year by the way yeah i fucking sick. no shit shit you're not so fucking sick I think this is it, right? Ah, oh, no. Here. Ah, uh, no. Next time. Yeah. That little, yeah, that little thing right there. And like red miso, the the before I start blasting the the very end of the blast, you know, before I start doing that, there's like straight up, you know, yeah, um, sixteenth note triplets at one thirty two bm bpm, which is kind of like fast. yeah, for me it's like kind of at that point, but it's like a very short period of time, um, and then uh, with the right hand I'm. Uh, I'm doing like, you know, so I'm like putting like twos over it, but like not starting on the downbeat, starting on what is it? like the backbeat or the the and, you know, of. While we're on that red, red so. miso subject, how many takes did the one that went up on mine will take? That was the first take. Bollocks! No it way! Was. Yeah. I did three more just to make sure because I've learned like fucking freak. don't fucking don't go in and, and nail it and then be like all right that's the one and then I fucking look back and then it's like oh there's something so like I did a bunch more but yeah that that ended up being the one okay last question on that video I'm such a fanboy which is rare because <laughs> normally I don't like things <laughs> um, the the edit in that video yeah. Is it a joke, or did you actually edit there? I know, obviously, it's the the bit of the song. Yeah. But is that, because I, I took that as, like, when I was watching it impartially, I was like, either he's telling us there's a comp there, or it's a joke about the, the um, bit in the song. For me, it's it's not a joke. It's just that that's what it is on the record. Like, we chopped it up like that. Um, so that, that breakdown was actually like Tosin, uh, I was like, yo, track a bunch of shit over click and I'll fucking make a breakdown out of it. So he tracked all this crazy shit and I'm like, yo, play some quintuplets too. And like oh, some triplets, but slower triplets. And then like had him do all these different things and I took it home and I fucking chopped Frankenstein it up. Frankenstein that motherfucker. Yes, and shit. like made the breakdown. And like as part of the breakdown, I wanted some like, I don't know if this is right, like some mirror type shit or something, some, something yeah. like that where it's like super processed and they don't give a fuck, you know? So like, yeah, I just edited it together where it was like, da -da 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 yeah, and like we did the drums that way. They weren't going to edit it that way. And I'm like, dude, that, you got to do that. Intrinsic you got to do, to you, you gotta do that. Yeah. So like, that's why I did it is because like, it's part of the, the glitchy feel. Yeah. And it's like, you won't get it live because it's impossible to do live. What do you um, do like? You just play it and it's, it doesn't have the... Yeah, I just do a simple mute. Yeah, instead of... 
Nice. But maybe we should come up with some device where my tech can like, t -t 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 like, I don't know. Choke, a little choke like this. <laughs> da -da -da -da. <laughs> okay, that's all the questions that I needed, needed to know. Now we have the fun bit, which I didn't preempt you for. Last few episodes of the podcast, what, what we is have it? a section called Dream Festival. Ooh. And it's not just the bands or the artists. We're going to go through the whole thing of we're, we're curating Matt Gasker's Dream Festival. Now, I want to tell you that it is truly, it could happen in a dream. We have had people say, uh, Queen is playing with Freddie Mercury. So, like, you know, people are back from the dead. You can do anything. Mm. I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. Starting with... You are creating the dream festival of Matt Gasker. Animals are playing, so bear that in mind. Where is it located? Well, um, it's not going to be in California because California is a desert. Nice. It's a little too dry. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to Tennessee be an outdoor festival. Tennessee? I would say just fucking Bonner down like the road. Bonnaroo, like. It, it wasn't bad. I, I, I really didn't mind that at all. Um, you guys played Bonnaroo? We did, yeah. And maybe sometime like in the fall when it's more mild weather or something. Nice. Um, or the spring, you know. Uh, so the weather's it's reasonable? Yes. Okay. Not overly that's, that's... hot, but like in a moist environment where there's still nature, there's still grass. You know. Okay, you can do anything. You can uh, you can adjust anything with with the lineup with uh, with the area. We've had you know pr you know Prague the the center of Prague with the clock. We've had some, okay. Somebody let's said let's there. add in a uh -huh. Zen garden then. There we go. Let's That's add in a Zen about. garden with like freaking all sorts of like uh, flowers and um, like Com a meditating area a for people. Bowls. Couple of That's right, singing bowls, bunch of gongs. We'll we'll put. Minor. Have you ever had like a, a sound bath before? Oh, love it. And I my love minor it. one actually at the minor drum festival. They had like a son the sonic oh, area right. set up, and yeah. there was like a lady that you laid laid down and she did the fucking thing. Yes, it works. Yes, I love it. I found some this group on TikTok. You know, they got the big crystal bowls and like this dude has a piano. And uh, I just like I love it. I, love I fuck it. with yeah. that hard. It for me, it like it's like cleanses, like my palate or like, yeah. I don't know. Okay, so does it, something. But the gongs are sick too. Like I went in a Memphis drum shop in the back room with all the gongs, and like you clap, and it's like, you it's just hear them all if, activate. It says if you are in a giant cave under the earth, that is has water and mist over the top and like that that's what it sounded like when like i clapped you hear the fucking sound like, wave oh, yeah it was fucking incredible it's like okay so now, now we're like cooking. now we're then cooking. i stood in front of this gigantic gong and he rung it out and it felt like i was at the top of a mountain and there was a portal opening up behind me and it was like going through me like it's different that like wind hits you and like doesn't go through you obviously the sound waves are way but longer the, they go through you yeah like, like it's not like being heart. at a show where you're like oh this is loud it's like no you actually and it's resonating very truly at like this set of frequencies it's not like all these jumbled together you know stuff from a live show yeah so it's i don't know it's crazy it was an experience scientifically like it is going through you Yes. Like the sound wave is going through your organs. There's no yes. way that it doesn't do something. It's we, doing something, yeah. We can't possibly like quantify what it is doing, but scientifically, the sound is going through, like it's going through your heart, going through your fucking brain. Well, Not much light your, doesn't your do brain that. has different waves, right? It has different frequencies that it operates at, like beta, smart. theta, alpha waves, and like. Um, I'm on alpha all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm switched up. Even when I'm sleeping, bitch. <laughs> Out, full alpha. <laughs> but no, yeah, that, no, that shit, the whole, the wave, the frequency thing, like, with sound, I think that's why sound is 
music is more without sounding insane like touching because felt it, yeah it's it felt. Ha- it's, it's yes. physically it felt and although like that sounds like it's coming from like a woo woo place of like oh it no really, it's quite literally it's quite felt. literally yes enters your body and leaves your body that's how it fucking yes. works and the effect, light, the effect on like Alzheimer's patients and these people with crazy brain degenerative diseases whenever they hear music um is like they light up and yeah, all the of a sudden they're shit. like they're like healed it's, it's as yeah. if it's like that you know that's crazy so shit. like it's it's a part of our spirit that i it, i don't know how music was invented but it's something very natural to the human you know what's cool about like hypothesizing how music was invented it was a hundred percent drums first there was like as in it was or fucking, vocals oh, i know me i know i've me. had this thought before though and i thought damn okay you know, we're second we're vocals came we're second <laughs> we're second <laughs> we're second i don't know is that Do why we... vocalists don't fucking load out because they're like i was it first my <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to load out. <laughs> I invented this shit. Okay, we're second. Yeah. No one's coming out of the back. Oh, I got this rock with some strings on it. <laughs> like, it was vocals and then it was fucking drums. Yeah. Okay, so we're in Bonnaroo. <laughs> yeah. Got There's a, a zen, got garden. zen garden. Got a okay. sound bath area. What yeah. is your accommodation? Dream accommodation. I want you to really think. I don't want you to just think like... I think about festivals, I think about whatever. I want you to think, if if I had a dream festival where Animals is playing, where do I want to sleep that night? I want to sleep in like a fucking cabana, like one of these Airbnbs that you see that's like, it's got like, um, like uh, maybe we can do it by water because some Airbnbs, you know, they got like these see-through floors and underneath Ooh, you can see the water. It's right floor. on the head. Yeah, basically like that. And like they're, you know, it's a small built, it's a small room, but it's got a nice bed and got like, what's that stuff that hangs over a bed? The, um, not chandelier, but like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. The sheets over the, the oh, fancy stuff. Fancy beds, fancy beds. Yeah, yeah, fancy beds with like, with netting or whatever. But but yeah, maybe like a cabana thing too, where it's like, you know, it's this small room and it's kind of set up like a tent, but a really nice tent. And it's Almost got like some an amenities. It's like an extension of the zen area. Yes. So let's yes. just say animals has a complex and it includes the zen area with your accommodation. Yeah. But you know, I don't want to put words into your mouth. The music will end. There's no after party when you're trying to sleep. We'll get to the after party afterwards. And again, anything goes. Okay, so who's headlining? Hmm. It can be anyone. Alive or Let dead. Let me start with some other ones first before no, I say No, no. Really? Need, I need the headliner. Okay, we'll go. We'll go. Who is second stage? You can give me second stage and come back to headline. Okay, I want to see Bob Marley. I, I got to see Bob Marley. Nice. He's got, got to bring him back. Wait, he's, he's not headlining. He's Surely a, he's the headliner. He's a musical prophet. A hundred percent. Since he's coming back from the dead, maybe he should be headlining, but... It's, a, it's an event. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but like low key, I I kind of want to reserve that number one spot for like all right. All right this okay, is the we're... best music. Okay, so we've got the second stage is Bob Marley and the Wailers, I assume. And the what? And Bob Marley and the Wailers. And the yes. Wailers. Yes. So, wow, this headline has got to be big because <laughs> science <laughs> is being completely rewritten. <laughs> um, who yeah, else? You so, uh, Jimmy a, Hendrix. You smoking a fatty or not? Yeah, okay. bro. <laughs> uh, that, but, you know, like, it's going to be... Maybe we move this to we, a legal state. You want to <laughs> move this to a legal state? I don't think it'll be necessary. We're, we're going to do this on private property, kind of like Woodstock, where it's nice. like, you know, it's really their prerogative what they want to tell the police or the the people that are responsible for security at the event to okay, I'm really down. be on the lookout for you know what i'm saying i'm down i'm down before we get to your <laughs> before we get to your headliner what's catering um hmm. think of it you're there ignore the fact that you're going to watch bob marley you're there animals is playing 
what is the catering? What's the like, oh my God, catering is, did you guys hear? This mm. is catering. Okay, so breakfast is gonna be served. Legit breakfast. You know, it's gotta be Thank like God, I hate people biscuits that have, like, and gravy, sushi for fucking breakfast. Waffles, pancakes, bacon. I had a, I had a waffle um, this morning. I met, we don't do it back sausage. home. We don't do waffles. We don't do waffles, it's not a thing. That's sad. I, it's so sad. You, Thank you, you fuck with chicken and waffles? <laughs> Love it. Amazing. So we can we have that in like niche. In fact, it's called like National Hot Chicken and Waffles. It's like in Glasgow, there's a place and you can have it there. That's sick. Shout out Buck's Bar. And you can have it there and it's sick, but it's super niche. But we don't have like, waffles isn't a breakfast item. We have potato waffles and they suck. Mm, we don't I have like that. waffle, like I was in my hotel this morning. I went downstairs. There's a whole rig for waffles. Yes. The waffle rig. It's pretty cheap, too. You put the fucking shit in, you pour it, you flip the thing, and I had a fucking sick waffle. Yeah, you make your own. Okay. It's not that complex. So we got a three three course, I'm assuming, in your catering. Yeah, Dream so that's catering. breakfast, and it's legit. Um, and uh, then uh, I definitely want some Mexican food there, because <sighs> taco trucks, can they can really kill it. You know what I'm saying? Did like, we just become best mobile, friends? <laughs> easy. <laughs> Love it. Then I want um, a place that has like um, like kebab, just Ooh. straight up fucking for guys who want to stay on their macros. You gotta you gotta give them that rice, chicken kebab, breast meat, and then beef, and like you know maybe some of those um, like the the bread, the non bread type oh, stuff. You know, big, huge fan. I don't know. I would like some Indian there, just in general. Actually. You can do whatever maybe you that, want. Maybe it's that's a fucking dream festival. Maybe there's two yeah. dishes. There's two days. Two different sets. Maybe it, this place kind of does like they can do Thai rice. You know, Thai fried rice. They can also do regular rice. They can do basmati. You know, they can do naan. You can mix you it can, up. You can mix it up how you want. It's a you three day a, festival. You can get a korma, chicken korma. Love me some some of that. Next time you're in Glasgow. You guys right. got great Indian uh, food there. Glasgow has insane Indian yes. food. The minute you said korma, it's like, I know the place. Obsession of India, Merchant City, Glasgow. It's the best fucking korma I've ever had in my Sick. life. And I've been to India. So and it wasn't yeah. as good <laughs> as the one from fucking Glasgow. That happens sometimes. That happens. See, England's national dish <laughs> is fucking, it's curry and it's fucking sick. That's the best one. Okay. <laughs> Who's headlining? Come on, give it to me. Mm. I can't believe Bob Marley's not headlining. I'm going to give you, I'm going to yeah, give you that. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix is also playing this festival. We're, we're playing, Car Bomb is playing. God, it's um, Meshuggah is playing for sure. Do you know what? Meshuggah is a um, feature on almost every dream festival on this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's just like, well, Meshuggah's got to be there. Yeah. Um, Noisia. I like them. I nice. like a DJ. They, they were like, they started like dubstep sound. But yeah. They're, they're sick. Um, <sighs> who's, uh, who's the head? Give me the, the top three. He says, you've gone nuts here, Jim. Okay, Chikoria. We're going to bring back Chikoria ah, for this see, one, too. I thought too. we were going fusion. I yeah. thought we were well, going we to Well, we got to have them there. Yeah, we got to do that. Who's playing drums for Chikoria? Because you have a fucking plethora of people to pick yes. from. Who you got? Hmm. Or are you going to invent someone new playing with it? I mean, uh, I could do the gig. It's a dream festival. I think it's that's my locked dream in. gig. I think that's locked in. Surely, <laughs> if it's your dream gig, that's the headliner. Yep. Yeah. Chick Career Electric Band with with me, Matt Garcia. <laughs> Am I allowed to do that? I feel like that's not fair. That's it's it's cheating, what do you right? Mean? That's, no, it's the dream an festival. An abuse of power. That's an abuse of power. No, it's your dream festival. That like I literally mean. The literal meaning of dream, like I just woke up from a dream and I was playing with Chick Corea. That's your fucking dream festival. Yeah. Okay, now we're cooking. I wonder if Chick and fucking Bob Marley are gonna beef about who's headline. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy. Jimmy would probably just like, man, this is fine. Okay. Well, there would be three nights, three headlines. So you could also get three different meals. You could have your curry, yes. you could have. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, this is it's gonna okay. be a big festival. Yeah. Animals is first playing. night. Jimi Hendrix. Um, actually, first night. Uh, let's do Chikoria. Let's do that. Let's get heady. Get it out of the way, so you can. So I can. You can party. Get <laughs> you can fucked do up yeah. with Jimmy. You can do all the fucking acid. <laughs> and then the, the next night with Bob Marley. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Yeah. What is the after party or the after occurrence? What's going to happen after the show? Are you some after people the are show? To bed? Some it's going to be a jam. Oh, it's going to be it. a jam. And it's going to be like kind of VIP area, you know, maybe like people can gather around the outside, but there's only a certain amount of people in this like little kind of tent. Um, I love that. And it's just like 200 people or something. Do you know what? You're the second person to say that on the podcast. Like after show is a jam. Why doesn't that just happen? Like, it doesn't happen at a festival. Yeah. Why wouldn't that happen? Like, because a lot of people have like very arranged sets, you know, and that's the performance. That's the light they want to be seen in. And then after that, it's like, yeah, I crushed it, but like now I don't want to make a fool of myself. Just jam. <sighs> but I don't think the option is there. Like, you know, I don't know how many like of the metal metal festivals you guys play, but like. With Full Force in Germany, the one that's on, the, it's on like an old air base. It's like a fucking, it's, uh, there's shit everywhere. It's like a fucking army base. I think but we the, did that. the backsta and the backstage backs onto the water. It's fucking awesome. In the backstage area, there's a gym. They put a gym there because they were like, oh, obviously it's fucking Let's perfect. Let's add that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have that. Here, yeah. um, but like, it's fucking sick. But in that sort of compound, like, I'm just like, why isn't there? Just like a jam room. I've never seen it at a festival. But I did one festival where, um, oh man, oh, why am I blanking on my buddy's name right now? Oops. It doesn't matter. But it, it was basically like the small, like little jam afterwards, after the festival. And it was like metal festival. But Tech Fest. Was it Probably. the UK one? I think so. Yeah, that's the only place I've ever seen it done. Yeah. Because it's all the fucking nerdy metal people. But why isn't it like, imagine like Reading Festival has it or fucking Bonnaroo and they have like, it's in the actual backstage and you just put it in a soundproof area or whatever. There's no way people don't want to jam with each other. It would be sick. Yeah. Maybe we're starting it right It could now. probably also be like someone's career gets ended. You know, because like they oh, sound boy. like such garbage. I mean, it's going to be whiplash. <laughs> and it gets like, whiplash means it goes eight viral. Miles. It's like, yo, know, this cat was drug. Listen to how fucking terrible he is. Whiplash meets eight mile, like rap battle of musicians. Are we adding that in? Like sudden death at your festival? Yeah. Like your career ends if you bum note. It's fucking over. Uh, okay. Jam session after. Jam session yeah. is on location. That's, that's there. Yeah, There's no but it's like kind of a VIP area because you know it, it's you it's got we gotta create an there. intimate vibe where people do feel free enough that you know it's not in front of thousands and thousands of people. Like it's got to be this great big thing. Low pressure, intimate vibe, and maybe honestly, that's Zendon. when the, that's when yeah maybe. And that, becomes, that's honestly when the best, like, you know, I've done some, like, um, some Neo Soul gigs in the area where it's 100% improvised. It's like, there's no tune where we're like, hey, we're playing this tune. It's just like, we're going to fucking come up with whatever we come up with right now. Somebody starts it off, but, like, then we're going to somewhere. And, like, riding that vibe... I've, I've been all about that. Like, it, to do that, you got to be, like, fully present yeah, in the moment. Yeah, fucking crazy shit. Yeah. And, like, it's beautiful because, like, somebody can come up with the thing that ends up being the motif. Everyone starts congregating around that one motif that the piano player played or that maybe I play or, you know, like, no one can really predict who it's going to be that's, you know leading the charge on what because like sometimes the person that's supposed to be leading the stuff they're coming up with is not k 
catching everybody. So yeah. like, I don't know. Riding that vibe, you kind of you got to be in like the right mental state and and environment, like where people are receptive and they're like, oh shit, like where you can start to feel people, yeah. like either lose interest or like gain interest. I feel like metal loses that a little bit. Oh yeah, like. There's not enough, probably because of the stagnation of the fucking program triggered. It's just, it is what it is. Nobody's going out there improvising stuff in metal. Uh, Maybe oh. some fills or whatever, but... On the subject, last thing that was on my notes that I didn't do it. The solos that you mm -hmm. do every night. Truly improvised or rehearsed loosely or completely rehearsed? So like Ender, Ender Cafo... I mean... Improvised. It's and it's all off the cuff. It's like that's a fucking vote. I don't know what I'm gonna play. It's like you have a blow. And it's like two. It's two beats before I'm supposed to start so long, and I don't know what I'm gonna that play. That brutal assault video. I reckon I watched it a hundred times. <laughs> I fucking love it. But yeah. like, there's like stuff that I end up playing that's the same, you know, or like using utilizing some of the same patterns, but like. Yeah, um, uh, like I said, I don't even know what I'm going to play. I'm just, I love it. I'm, just, I'm just, I, like, I attacking. I stole that idea from you. We have a song, First World Problem Child. At the end of it, we extend the outro. It's the last, last, set of the, last song of the set. Yeah. And I originally like prepared like a go nuts moment, and then now every night I'll change one bit of it. And then by the end of the tour, it becomes like a different thing. Yeah. That's my little Matt Glasker wannabe moment. Hell yeah. But it's fucking, it's so much fun. I, I do that where like, I, I'm, I'll have like a solo and like, uh, it'll be more open at the beginning of the tour. And then I'll start to dial things in more and kind of start getting to where it's more the same. It kind of just irons itself Realize out. Realize where the spaces are and what you can add and what you can take and away. And like, it's, if something's really effective and it's sick and I just do it off the cuff once, it's like, well, can I do that again? Because if I can, I think I should. If the audience is responding to it too, it's like, I, I kind of have to add that, you know? So like, there's a level of that like it g becoming more organized but then there's also a level of sometimes i'm just like fuck what i've been creating because sometimes you try to recreate what you've done and it just ends up not coming out the way it's supposed to and it can dissolve its effectiveness so at that point you might as well just fucking go off so it's i think it's like a balance of getting to where you kind of start to hone stuff but you got to keep enough room and space available in your consciousness in your approach to allow yourself to do something spastic and unpredictable to yourself and you, you're gonna have to have a pair of nuts for that could be because you might fuck up and it might be bad so fucking but that's how you get after that's how you get the ability to just fucking go nuts and go off and go out to space in front of people it's that i've tried to like a lot of my life i've tried to kind of like control all the factors do all this practice prep all this work all these combos against each other and then like the shed happens or the performance happens and it's like it doesn't always happen the way you want it to and you're not always as great you did all this prep there's a level of like letting go mm -hmm. and just fucking going for it and some guys they they do their whole career just doing that you can kind of tell who they are they're not as organized they're not going to play the same shit multiple times Is that much, like, much of a career just fucking going nuts all the time <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah, I mean, name any names. There's some, just... there's some guys. Yeah, they, they. Well, like... like a career, career, like making money, not just like really good at the drums. Because oh, there's that's... a lot of those. Yeah, yeah, that's different. There's a, that, and that's a, that's a. Fuck me, that's a whole nother topic. Just like, there is a lot of people out here there who are, game changing, innovative, incredible musicians, and they are just, not, 
it's not their job. Yeah. They're not, they're not, I don't know. They, they're not recognized. People don't like yeah. know about them or they, just, like, they don't get that gig. That's but like, they're world beaters. That, yeah. That, that with, with all due respect, that could have been it. Yeah. Because yep. I, I remember when animals, when Naveen left animals, I remember I was, I was in a band with uh, Mike Semesky that was friends with Alex Rudinger and I knew that there was, I think, Troy Wright, Alex Rudinger, both those people I knew, and this guy, Matt Gasker. And they were the three that they were looking at, or at least that I knew. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I, I don't know this guy. And then you get the gig and I'm like, oh my good. Goodness gracious me, this guy's a fucking monster. I, was on, I was on gas for chaps. <laughs> but like, that's not my world. I think my, I had that's a home team world. advantage. Like, I was there in town rehearsing with them. Um, no, I don't like, know. Don't, I think don't play some, yourself down. There were some green card issues with Troy, I think, and then... I don't, you don't know. play yourself down there. I'm just saying that, like, I'm from the metal world, but Animals as Leaders sort of trod jazz into the metal world. So I yeah. knew who they were. And then you, by proxy, come into that world. Where do you think you would be if you didn't do animals? Do you think... I got no clue, because I was ready for anything. I, I was brought up by real musicians making... Getting by. Just getting by doing fucking gigs. Bar yeah. gigs, the nursing home gigs, doing whatever the hell they had to do or working at the crematorium in the day, you know, like, and they're like, you never know what it's going to be. It could be jazz that you get the fucking call for. So your swing better be together. And so I started aggressively learning jazz and all these different styles when I was 14, 15, 16. And I was also playing punk. I was playing metal stuff too. And I, I wasn't... I wasn't like, oh, this is the one style I want to play. For me, it was like, I fucking love all these. And I, I actually, there's something here in each one of them. And I love that. And I, I just can't say I'm going to do one. Like, I, I didn't have the decisive power to choose a style. You know what I'm saying? And also, mm. these guys were like, so Kill Switch Engage. Uh, my teacher told me the story that you know he went to heart school with the drummer um justin foley okay and this guy's learning tiny drum kit. classical and yeah he's learning classical and um um you know jazz at heart school of music in connecticut and you know he he's in the practice room he's playing double bass and these guys are making fun of him while he's in the practice room practicing double bass because, oh, this guy, he's not going to get a fucking gig. Like, playing that shit and, you know. That's crazy. Then he ends up being the drummer for Kill Switch Engage. He makes probably more than those three or four dudes combined now. And then when he gets home, he does the, he plays. I didn't know at, that. Like, line. symphonic fucking snare. And shit. I didn't know with that. With an orchestra, yeah. I knew his setup was weird for metal. I knew there was something in him. I remember seeing it and being like, oh, yeah. interesting. So moral of the story is, you know, this guy ended up, double bass ended up being his thing. If I would have said, well, I really love fusion, I love jazz, Latin funk, and, uh, and I love rock, uh, fuck it, I'm not going to learn double bass. You, no way I would have gotten man, the animals gig. You're fucked. Yeah, if I would if I would have been like, oh, I'm not gonna be one of those crazy drummers like chops and stuff. No, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be groove guy, like totally different story. Wouldn't have got that, but because I loved all that other shit, I felt like it helped me with the animals gig. And because I had like delved into the gospel chop shit, like they they like they appreciate different cultures too, and they're like that that gospel shit. Is powerful, like it's undeniable. Like oh. what's going on in American churches, absolutely undeniable. So like, they're like, we got a dude. He's white, but he got some of that. Maybe he can bring that in. 
and do the metal thing, and he seems to have odd times under his belt, you know, like... It would have been such a different band with either of the other two. Yeah. I think not as good. I agree. I mean, <laughs> love the other two. Personally, love the other two. I agree. They'd yeah. like Monomyth wouldn't have happened. Oh, yeah. For one, but, like, that's my number one. That's my... It's so interesting that you wrote, like, the patterns because that's my number one animal song. Yeah. I'm like an animal nerd. Really? But like, I'll tell you what, I am an animal nerd and this will be, this is no slight at all on Naveen because I loved Animosity. I loved yeah. all the stuff it does and I love Entios. Like, I'm a self-titled and then I'm a Joy of Motion onwards. Yeah. And it's not, it, I don't know what it is. It's like no slight on anything. I just think self-titled really clicked with me. I, yeah. I listened to self-titled. Everybody, the, I think. The first yeah. time ever, and I was so high. I was in a car, and someone was like, you ever heard this band? I was like, no. And then, do, 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 and I was like, what is fucking happening? Incredible. Yeah. And then I like kind of fell off for a bit, and then Joy Emotion came out. And the, the same, I think you had like a video about displacement or something. Around the same time you were announced as the animals drummer yeah there was that video the displacement video i think you were in a church there or something i was yeah um and then i'm watching and i was like oh my goodness and then my friend nolly was on like helping with that record and then he got like, he sent me like nolly fucking sent me videos of you tracking that record and i was like oh, this guy's fucking crazy and then i was sold on it from then so there's no slight on the naveen era or anything like that but it would not have been the same band yeah, it's crazy how that happens, and I would kind of want to speak on something else, like in in pertaining to this, because I see this a lot. Where you know bands nowadays that are calling themselves bands, they're not really bands, because it's one dude oh, that writes all the shit and then tells everybody what to do, and then you have this cat, this rotating cast that comes in and it changes it dramatically. It's like, can you imagine Led Zeppelin without? John Bonham no. or fucking Robert Plant like or any of the guys it's like no and they knew that too when John Bonham died they're like it's over kind of sick that they did that because no one does I that. agree I agree Van Halen you know David Lee Roth left and they're like no we're gonna keep on going with Sammy Hagar mm -mm. I'm sorry I'm not a Hagar I'm not a Van Hagar fan Van Hagar no it's like you know especially in metal this one guy doing all the stuff writing all programming all the drums and guitar and all this stuff and it like it doesn't give as much depth think about it this way like if you have four different points of view you can like literally rotate the thing that it is and give it more definition more you got to find those complexity, four, more character. You know, it is difficult to find. You got three. It's even harder to find four. Yes, like, I'm, I'm that's super part lucky of why straight. it's so it's fucking cool when a band comes out and it's like these dudes are really on the same page. These dudes are really fucking come together to create this really cool fucking unique, right? Creative, not been invented before that's why I, I feel lucky to join stray because when, when i joined stray it's like fucking seven years ago now it's like i joined i liked the band anyway i liked what the old drummer did and then we started writing together and it was like a fucking i was apparently the missing piece of the puzzle and then that was bringing out other stuff from the guitarist other stuff from the bassist yeah. other stuff from the vocalist and it was like okay we're now making something brand new we're a new unit now you it's like yeah. one person like exactly what you're saying one person can't possibly have fucking four brains or three brains or a, like a, a separate point of view the same way that it's super important to at least engage with people who have different views to yours because it either reinforces yours or gives you a more open mind about their shit yes the same with music yep different perspective and yeah, like writing too, you know? I'm like, yeah. Uh, we each, in each member of Animals has like different influence. We listen to a lot of the same stuff, but like we have, like the, the guys don't listen to Fusion like I listen to Fusion, you know? 
That's just like not a thing. Um, and there's stuff they listen to that I don't listen to to the same degree. So like we're each coming from different influence, but like I think we all appreciate novelty and. Well, I wanna. I'm gonna end. We usually end on the festival, but okay. we're just fucking yeah. going. Um, because I know for a fact there'll be people listening to this who have nothing, no foot in the door with fusion, right? And I actually do. I enjoy a lot of Tower of Power, Mad Vision Orchestra, like, um, you know, more f like funk fusion. The the more the the world is like classical fucking legends of drummers or have been in these bands. Yeah. Weckl, Dave Weckl band. Give me, give me some fusion recommendations because people are going to be like, okay. what have you so got? So check it out. Fusion was invented basically by Miles Davis's album, Bitches Brew. Okay. He had... Crazy album, crazy fucking artwork. Yeah. So from that stemmed Mahavishnu. Why? Because of Billy Cobham and John McLaughlin. John McLaughlin was playing with Miles Davis. Um, Headhunters came from that. Who was playing with Miles Davis? Herbie Hancock. And then Chikoria. Um, and oh, what else? There's like two more that I'm missing right now that I'm blanking on. Uh, weather report does that weather fall report in? yes yeah, yes baby. Joe Zawinul now, yep. now we get then we get to the yes. bassist this is when bassist became a thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, there's one more or two that I'm blanking on but the that those bands are like they're kind of the godfathers of mixing jazz rock it used to be called not fusion but jazz rock it was like Kind of like rock and roll. People just call it rock now. Rock and roll used to be the rock, the straight stuff. Do do get it, do do get it, and then do that, do do get That's the rolling part. Yeah. Shit used to be like swung too. Like the blues if, coming into the rock. Yes, you. It's not just a straight feel. Like they would have like swing feels or like in between feels. That that's why it was called rock and roll. So like. Same concept, but with rock, meaning, you know, straight up just rock mixed with jazz, which has Latin influence too. Um, and that, that's the birth of fusion. And since then, there's a whole lot of bad motherfuckers that have popped up, but like, can you give me a, me a top five like, albums of listening? For, for fusion? fusion? Just because I know people are going to be like, I wish, wish I had it. Okay. Um, Mahavishnu, Birds of Prey. You got to hear that. Um, let me go to my thing. I got a playlist called Garska Jams. Oh, Tony Williams and Alan Holdsworth. You got to fucking yeah, hear that. Yeah, um, yeah, Tony going. Williams Lifetime collection. It's got Proto Cosmos and Fred on there incredible um album Th that was like tony's greatest gift i think um to drumming uh let's see Ooh, hadrian farad's um first album see i don't know i don't know who that is he's a bass player so I, everything you mentioned so far i'm aware of but that's that's what i want yeah he's he's nasty um what else for fusion? Oh, um, Wayne Krantz Trio. Uh, what's this album called? Long to be Loose. It's a great one. It's got a. Um, yeah, uh, Wayne Krantz and. It's good for some of these people to hear. Like, if you're if you're really involved in gridded music and you've never stepped foot in the jazz realm, fusion is the best possible first step like to yeah. hear real drums yes the, like doing stuff that's fucking crazy yeah 
Like Absolutely. Billy Cobham, some like Billy Cobham shit. Like imagine Billy Cobham gr- stuff, all his stuff. Imagine check it out. gritting Billy Cobham. Like imagine oh, you get him in the studio and then you just fucking grit it. What oh, would it man. sound like? It's pocket gets lost, man. Like when you got a real like James Brown. Imagine if we gritted that shit, yo. Fucking it's horrible. Like, fuck off. Okay, another one. I, I'm gonna hit you with a bunch here. Um, That's right. I'm clearing up all my drinks. We're coming now to the verse end. now. Um, their first record, Mark Juliana on it, was sick. Oh, shit. I don't know that. Yep. Um, Robert Glasper, like, a bunch of his old stuff, like, um, uh, Canvas, In My Element. Um, yeah, I think it's the Robert Glasper trio. Um, you ever fuck with, who's the guy, who's the fucking bassist that was in Tribal Tech? What's his fucking name? Dennis Chambers plays with him. Played with him. Uh, uh, what the fuck is that guy? Gary Willis. Gary Willis. That album yeah. Bent. You ever heard that, hear that one with Dennis Chambers on drums? No. <sighs> it's fucking insane. Okay, it's I'm so gonna check sick. that out. I, I gave Matt Gasker a fusion Damn. recommendation. Damn. Gary Willis Bent. And there's a track, Got it. Armageddon Blues. Just put the first two seconds of it on there. Okay. It's Armageddon Blues, Gary Willis. It's primo Dennis Chambers. It fucking better be on there. I better be right. It's such a nice kick and snare sound as well. Gary Willis. Uh-huh. There's an insane feel in the minute. I got something that's pretty nuts from Dennis. Oh yeah? It's kinda like this, but a little more this nuts. Feel. There's a feel the, the second like the A B with that feel later on. Yeah. He's, he like the drum, drum falling down the stairs. Yeah. This record fucking rips, bro. Oh, it comes in a minute. Come on. I'm going to get to it. Oh, sorry. Oh, it doesn't matter. We're, we're still recording a podcast. Ready? It's not. It's about fucking... It's in about 20 seconds time, so don't worry about it. But... Okay, we're gonna get okay. to it though. You're close, you're so close, oh, you're oh, so okay. close, you okay. have to get okay. to it, you have to get to it. It's coming, it's the next rotation. Here we go, Dennis. Ooh, singles. So, yeah, so, singles so, like a motherfucker. Just, but, but like, not gridded, like... There's, it's in triplets, but it's fucking straightens out in sections. Just, just beautiful. There's a Tom Coster album called Let's Set the Record Straight. You won't be able to find it on Spotify or Ooh. iTunes. You gotta go to YouTube. That underground but shit. Check out this fucking, this intro things. here. The. Do you, the beginning? On, do you remember On The Verge wasn't on fucking Spotify or iTunes for the longest possible time? Oh, really? Yeah. Dang. That had to be... I had to download that fucking illegally. I think the first Planet X album was the same thing. Okay. I wonder if I'm going to get in trouble for this. Oh, it's... That's nice. Love it. Love it. Oh, this is exactly the same vein. It's fucking perfect. What's that called? Let's set the record straight. It's a fucking blast beat there. He just yeah, blasted. Yeah, yeah. He's bla- motherfuckers blasting, yo. Like, the, and the double bass that Billy Cobham used to do, it's like, yo, he like low key. I don't know if he was doing this before Hot for Teacher, but like, he, he was coming up with a bunch of funky stuff with the double bass. Like, so cool. triplet stuff, like, and I'll say, this will be my last Gasker's dick suck of the night. I truly believe you're doing that with heavy music. You're bringing oh, man, the thanks. shit that hasn't been invented yet into heavy music, and it's changing, and I mean this in, like, 100% sincerely, it's changing what music is, especially heavy music, and it is evolving the genre to the point where 
much more interesting shit is coming out because of the good work you people are doing. Yeah. Well, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> trying to fucking change the course of history. You fucking are. You, know? you fucking are. Oh, and yeah. uh, I think that's a good place to leave it. It's been a, it's been a long, good one. We'll be yeah, on. thanks, man. Yeah, we're on two hours. Two hours Damn, perfectly. really? Thanks for doing it again. Dude, thanks. I want to do a part over. three. Next time you're in Glasgow. Let's do it. We do it in the studio. With the I think uh, the next year we'll be in Europe. Sometime next year. It's fucking good. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so right. much. Um, everyone check out fucking Animals as Leaders if you're living under a rock and you haven't checked it out. I have a playthrough for every single song. I think Thoughts and Prayers will... Uh, that's coming out like this Friday or something like that. I don't know. Soon. Well, but, uh, well this episode is going to come out soon because I'm late. So okay. that's good. Um, if you are struggling with your drumming, I cannot recommend matt's online fucking pdfs that you can buy his lessons enough yeah. it's insane the price they cost versus what you get out i put a lot of shit in there and lot, it's not just fluff like I, i'm really strict on like you know i learned a lot of shit that was useless stuff or stuff that maybe it made me better temporarily or like just gave me a challenge, but it wasn't applicable. So I focus hard on like, this is actually useful in musical situations. I'm all about that shit. I've used it myself. I've talked about it a lot. Fucking get it. Do some fucking shit. I'm gonna stop this podcast before something goes horribly wrong. Two hours on the fucking dot. Peace.